Hello friends, this is Kara Renee with Be Reborn Art and Healing. Welcome to episode 6 of Water Media Wednesday. Today I'm creating in my 6x6 watercolor disbound journal. Um, and these are some of the papers that I'll be using as I'll be collaging the background and then doing a watercolor uh, stamped image, um, which I will um, then adhere to the top of the page. Um, these are the stencils I'll be using as well. Um, the stamp and the sentiment are from Unity Stamp Company. Um, I did not end up using that last stamp. And these are the watercolors that I'll be using. These are my Rembrandt watercolors, um, my favorite. Uh, I love the small palette and the small wells. Um, so here I'm going to go ahead and um, tear my papers. Um, I did have a lot of trouble with this edge, and so I did end up just um, moving the ruler and just ripping it uh, on my own. I ended up using that strip, so nothing is wasted. Um, I just couldn't quite get my grip on that uh, that edge. So, um, and um, all the supplies that I'll be um, using will be listed in the on the blog uh, where this um, uh, video will be posted. Um, this beautiful vintage paper um, I used uh, in another project um, the other day, but I will be sure to put it in the uh, in the um, blog post. Um, she these are a digital um, a digital paper that you can get online uh, through her Etsy store, um, and then once you pay, you have immediate access. So um, and they're really really quite beautiful. Um, because I had just printed them out, um, my ink was not completely set on my copies, um, but it doesn't really matter. Um, I wiped some of it off just because I, I, it kind of looked yucky, but um, in the end, none of that is going to show. And then these clocks are also from um, the same Etsy shop. Um, I'm not going to even try to say her name. Um, it's really uh, difficult. So uh, anyway, I'm just finishing adhering my papers, just doing a little bit of collaging. Um, to create some interest in the uh, background. Um, I went full color uh, watercolor on this background as well. Um, still playing with the technique. I really enjoy it, but it is a new technique for me. Um, so uh, I did end up really covering uh, most of the background with, um, with the watercolor paint as well. Um, but it turned out okay. Wasn't my, my uh, favorite um, process here, but... Um, you know, that's part of the process, too, is we try techniques and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. Um, so we just keep on keeping on. Um, and here I've got a piece of Arches watercolor paper. Um, as it turned out, I did a really messy watercolor effect. I didn't really focus too much on detail. So the Arches watercolor paper was probably not necessary, but it is my favorite paper. So uh, that's what I pulled out. Um, and this is the Tim Holtz stamp platform, which you've probably seen in other videos, uh, not only my own, but others that you've watched. Um, it's just really nice for um, doing stamped images. Um, when you're stamping on watercolor paper, um, usually it takes more than one stamping. But in this case, I wasn't really concerned about having that black, that dark black outline. So I was, uh, I was happy with just the one impression. And here I'm just going to mix up the paints that I'm going to be using. Um, for this project, I am using uh, Aurelian from Rembrandt, uh, the Quinacridone Rose and Ultramarine Deep, and the, uh, I believe, Permanent Violet. I can't remember if I used the violet. I apologize. No, I did not. That was a different project. I've got a, a few things on the burner here, so I apologize for that confusion. Um, and again, I'm going to, I'm just going to zip through this process. It was fairly long uh, to paint this image. Um, and so you're going to see it fast forward through bits um, and then catch up uh, at the next, uh, the next intersection here. So um, I hope that you enjoy and I'll just let you kind of watch. I love the Rembrandt paints there. They were definitely uh, a spendy product, but the palette is so nice because I have all of these colors and they take up very little space on my table, uh, which I really like. Um, really enjoying being back in watercolor. Um, still playing around a lot, um, learning my own techniques, my own style, um, and just gaining confidence overall in the process. So, oh, I did use that, um, that permanent violet uh, for the centers to create a little bit more of a brown in the center of those flowers. 
when I get to the actual petals, um, I did, um, oh, sorry, here, um, I brought in a little bit more blue to kind of change the tone of uh, these, this greenery here. Um, so we've got some of the sap green, uh, more of the sap green color in the leaves, and then a more bluish tone to the other, uh, the other greenery. And again, I wasn't really fussy with this. I just really wanted to get the color down. I uh, wanted it to be really simple and um, not too uh, precise. So uh, I was able to achieve that and I was pretty happy with the design. And then I did dry here because I wanted to make sure that when I did start going into the petals, I wouldn't um, affect, I wouldn't have any of that color bleeding into the petals or the greenery into the petal, excuse me. And so here I'm just giving a light watch, wash of the quinacridone rose over both of the flowers. And then I'll be dropping in more quin rose um, in just areas of it there um, to add a little bit of, to leave some highlight and add a little bit of depth. The image is, um, is not terribly small, but it's, it's small enough that it's, and that this, um, mult, it's a multi-petaled flower, and so um, it takes takes a little bit of practice for me to get the shading, the darker colors into all of the right um, spots there. But um, again, for for an art journal page, I wasn't too concerned about the detail. I really just wanted to play with the watercolors, and again, they are my favorite uh, medium, and um, I have spent a lot of time doing mixed media and really enjoying um, coming back to. Uh, to some water coloring. So going to be uh, working on my skills there. And here I'm just coming in with a little bit more of that um, darker pink or it's, it's the same color, just not as diluted down. And just getting it into where the, um, the petals are meeting there in the base of the flower. I am still sick, um, feeling like I'm finally on the mend um, today. I haven't had to take any cold medicine or anything, so I think I'm actually getting better, thankfully. Um, with all the school closures in Washington, uh, it's going to get really interesting as far as my job. Um, so I'll be working from home and um, doing a lot of things to help support uh, our school and our students and parents. So looking forward to that opportunity. And here I'm just coming in with a Tim Holtz stencil with just these words. I just was looking through my binder and I thought, you know, they just, it fit um, the, where I was at and what I was thinking about this piece. Um, the floral spray is just really delicate uh, and I really like it. So I, I thought these words, these kind of love words would be, uh, would be appropriate for this page. And then I'm using my um, the Crafters Workshop light and fluffy modeling paste and this uh, stencil from Tim Holtz. And I'm just going to apply some texture um, in the corner, in a couple of the corners, and then uh, sporadically um, adding some um, some of that texture uh, across the page, as you'll see here in a moment. Uh, similar to what I would do with um, gesso. Um, only this time I thought, hey, I'll just use the texture paste. It'll probably give the same effect as the gesso would when when I use gesso to push uh, images back or push those papers back. So I was super happy with the background. I, I wish that I had left more of it showing. Um, but again, as I said in the beginning of the video, I am still learning um, to play with this mix of watercolor and mixed media. So um, it's all good. It was fun, a fun process. So and uh, as usual, coming in with my penny black script stamp and just stamping, stamping that around um, the page. And then I'm um, using the Ebony Splendor um, uh, brush line and I'll be sure to link those in the um, blog post when I get this up on my um, website. Um, and you can check that out at bereabornart.com. Um, every video that I produce on YouTube is also going to be on my blog and all of the um, supplies used will be listed there as well. And so here I just laid out um, the Aurelian, um, the, ultramarine, the ultramarine blue and the quin quinacridone rose. 
And I'm just coming in and just kind of um, playing around with the watercolor, uh, getting that yellow in various places and then coming in with the blue. Um, and uh, the camera, as I've mentioned before, my webcam is not uh, top of the line by any means. And so uh, you can't really tell the true life colors um, in with this camera. Uh, so it was much more vibrant than what you're seeing here, especially in the end. Um, the watercolor um, spots, the, the colors were um, really vibrant. Um, in the final piece. So hopefully you'll be able to see that in the still pictures at the end of the video. And then here's the quinacridone rose, uh, one of my favorite um, pinks and reds in uh, watercolor. Uh, it's just really soft and bright. And then I do come in and darken up that Aurelian. Um, Aurelian is a um, is a not a very opaque yellow, which is actually quite rare in watercolor. Most yellows are quite opaque, uh, but the Aurelian is not. Um, and then here I decided um, when I looked at the, oh, I apologize. I actually used my die cut machine um, and die cut out that flower using this scalloped frame um, die. And I really liked how it created this frame. I thought that I would use, I, I, I did had never used it before. So I was kind of unsure about how that was going to go. Um, and then after that, I went ahead and splattered um, the whole um, image with um, the quinacridone rose um, paint, uh, watercolor paint. And then here I'm coming in with my golden titanium white. It's watered down and just added some white sprinkles to the page as well as to the image and the frame. And then just dabbing it up a little bit, that drop droplet was pretty, pretty wet. So, um, and then as you can see, um, the, the image is, is kind of um, not really blending with the page. And so I went ahead and used my uh, Ranger archival ink and inked around the edges of that, um, that image. Um, I tried going around the frame, but the, the ink pad is just too big. So I just said, ah, it's good enough. And here is where I was hoping to be able to just um, kind of house that back in there, or have it, because I had the leaf stamped on the frame there at the bottom. Um, but in the end, I had to kind of go this route to be able to lay the page out. And again, this was not my one of my favorite um, pages that I've done, but it, you know, that that's also a lesson in itself. Not everything that we try uh, turns out the way that we see it in our mind, um, but it's still it's still art. It's still play. It's still ex ex exploration. It's still learning. Uh, so I believe that there's nothing really wasted. And um, and I just glued those the frame and the um, the uh, floral image onto my page. And then I went ahead and cut the sentiment at as well that says you are forever beautiful and I'm using that as my sentiment for my um, for my page and going ahead and gluing that down as well and then I do come in and splatter um, with the um, ultramarine blue here um, because I really wanted to tie those colors together um, and uh, again the the pick the, excuse me, the camera just is, doesn't do it justice. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you'll, um, you'll check out the other uh, five episodes that I've done so far of Water Media Wednesday. Um, I hope you're having a great day and that you're staying well and healthy. Um, talk to you later. Thanks again for watching. Bye-bye.